sanctuaries in the heavens. Fire and smoke shall rise up until they reach the very sky. Recently, I bought a bundle of Souls-like video games off of Humble Bundle. One of the games in that bundle was Blade of Darkness, a game that I had actually never heard of until seeing it as a part of this package. I play it in this video. I want to see if it's just another clunky early 2000s video game or if it's an appreciable RPG. First thing I'm going to be talking about here, of course, are the visuals. So, just a couple points I wanted to go over. All of the graphics besides the character models seem to have aged quite well. Uh, when I first loaded into this game, I picked the Amazon class for no particular reason at all. But once I had picked my class and looking through the other classes, seeing some of the enemies, those sorts of things, I realized that, like I said, it doesn't actually age all that well. The character models themselves look pretty questionable. However, the actual environment and everything else is tolerable. The lighting is accurately atmospheric. And what I mean by that is the lighting is very dark, uh, but that absolutely fits the atmosphere of the game so far from what I've played. It seems to be very accurate to the setting. It really kind of immerses you in the feel that the game is trying to create. So that's perfect. You don't have like a really dark, gritty story on like a, a very light, well-lit background sort of thing. There are periods of open areas, especially once you get to the second stage in the game. I don't know how much footage I'm going to include here just because I don't want to spoil too much, but there's a lot of fog which I imagine was probably just put there as a way to help the engine run because this is an early 2000s game, I think originally 2001, so hardware obviously wasn't up to doing a whole lot back in those days. The next topic, and probably one of the most important for the long-term enjoyment of any video game, is going to be the topic of sound. So, the sound in this game is incredibly loud from the get-go. I went in, I loaded up the main menu, I turned it down to, I think, like 5 out of 10, which is, uh, you know, it's on a, a 10 slider, which is not optimal to begin with, but I turned it down to around 5 out of 10. I went into the game and it was absolutely blasting my eardrums out, so I had to turn it down further to a 2 out of 10, and that's finally where I played on it. So, the the voice acting is decent. It does definitely fit the setting. It's got that kind of like over the top fantasy vibe to it with the voice acting, which is perfect because I mean, realistically, that's what this game is. The music is nice. However, it does get very repetitive. The music itself seems to be looped uh, and the combat music doesn't seem to have a whole lot of variance to it. So you kind of just listen to the same things over and over as you fight different enemies. Once the enemy fights are done, then you go back to listening to the same generic exploring the area map. It, you know, does kind of start to drone on after a little while, but overall the music was good enough where it wasn't a huge complaint to be listening to the same thing. Next up is the combat. I will try to find a clip of this, but this game has incredibly annoying vocal effects when you're fighting. Anytime your character swings, it's pretty much the same exact sound that plays every single goddamn time, and it repeats, and it's annoying as hell. The combo based attack system is pretty cool, it gives you kind of that like Street Fighter Mortal Kombat-esque feeling of mastering the combat which is very nice, it's not just generic swings like something like Skyrim for example. The enemies can actually hit each other as well which means that positioning is key because you can put yourself kind of in between an enemy, or sorry behind an enemy so that you have someone else in between you and a big guy with an axe or something like that and then he ends up just slicing his friends in the back while you dodge out of the way, which is pretty awesome, and they can actually kill each other too, not just hit each other, which is pretty awesome. I'll put another video example here as well, but this particular boss fight that I engaged in was over in like five seconds, meaning essentially that the weapon that I had found earlier in that very same level was in fact too powerful to make the game feel like any sort of a challenge whatsoever, which I was not a big fan of. The 
next topic of the discussion is going to be a very short, sweet, and to the point one. This is going to be the performance. Now, this game is uh, probably older than me, or at least close to it. It came out in the early 2000s, of course, so did I, oddly enough. But the game runs fantastically well on my modern hardware, so it runs at a solid 144 FPS. There are no stutters, and there are no crashes, which is absolutely perfect. I know a lot of times when you're running older games like this, sometimes stability can be an issue. So it was absolutely fantastic to see that they released this in a very good state. Last up, we are going to be talking about the gameplay as well as kind of summarizing my experience with this game. So some of the gameplay thoughts I had is that the movement is incredibly clunky. So it requires you to select a direction of movement and then it waits a second for before you actually start moving in that direction. So if you think about Dark Souls, for example, how when you sprint, it takes a second before you actually sprint to realize if you're trying to sprint or if you're trying to dodge. And then if you keep it pressed, it actually starts sprinting. It's very similar to that. So you have to basically hold the W key. It takes a second after holding the W key before realizing you actually want to go forward. It does the same exact thing with any other directional movement. So for example, if you're looking one way and you try to turn around and look the other way when you start holding S, it's then going to flip the camera and then it's going to wait a second to make sure you actually want to start moving in that direction. It is incredibly annoying to try and navigate with this movement type. That is something I wish that they would fix. Possibly there's a mod for it, but I, of course, am judging the base game, not mods in this video. The other thing I wanted to say is that the puzzle gameplay is very fun. So this entire game consists of puzzles from what I played so far, both in the way of the traditional puzzles, as well as the fact that you have to do a lot of exploring on the uh, each stage of the dungeon, if you want to call it that, each stage of the world map, or whatever you want to refer to it as. There's a lot of exploring and there's a lot of sequences that you have to do. So you have to go in and open certain gates and you only get there by going through other gates or you actually have to, you know, flip switches to fill up water and get to new areas, those sorts of things. Very cool indeed. I would put the overall enjoyment of this game at about a 5 out of 10. Overall, it was pretty fun. I got kind of immersed in the world. I was happy to play it. However, the actual clunkiness of the movement as well as the seemingly floaty slash weightless feel of the combat was just something I can't get around. There's not really any sort of impact or anything so because of those reasons i probably won't be playing through the rest of this game but if that changes and i complete the game i will make a review post beating the game for you guys as well thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video Woo! <laughs>